Hello, my name is Vanessa Quigley, and I'm here with my husband. Nate Quigley. My co-founder, we started a business together about six years ago called Chatbooks. Chatbooks is a photo book company. You download our iPhone app or our Android app or go to the web app, connect things like your Instagram account or upload photos from your phone or computer and you can make little photo books, 60 page photo books for 10 bucks with free shipping. And it's been super awesome to build this business together and also to shoulder some of the stresses along the way, right? Because entrepreneur life, <laughs> it's not all easy. Um, but there's been some new and new unique challenges with this coronavirus COVID time. And we want to talk, chat a little bit about what that's looked like for us and specifically for you, our CEO. You're interviewing leading me. out. Yes, wow. this is, I mean, it's a chat, but you're in the hot seat. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the day before Rudy Gobert announced that he was infected. Yes, Rudy Gobert Day. We were doing well. We were off to a great start. We'd had a really good 2019 where we'd grown. We were profitable. Um, we had a great January. February was kicking along. And all of a sudden, we're halfway through March. We just barely that day had a board meeting where we said, everything looks great. We're on plan. Growing faster than last year, still cash flow break even. And then Rudy Gobert got sick. The NBA canceled the season. The very next day, our sales were cut in half. And they stayed there. They stayed, you know, down 50% for a good a two weeks. weeks right? Yeah. And then we started, you know, was, and that was also the same time we were, you know, everyone kind of went to work from home. In fact, I think we had gone to work from home like the day before or something like that. I can't remember the time. No, because it happened. We were all still in the office. Ah, that's right. I think it was like a one-two punch. It right. Was, Rudy so, Gobert's got it. Rudy's sick. Everybody <clears throat> go home and we'll just sort of pick up the pieces the best we could. And we, after, you know, waiting for 10 days or so, looking at this 50% sales drop, started thinking, what are we going to do to remind people that we're still here without also stressing them out? You know, it was a stressful time for everybody. And we didn't want to do the normal act now going fast countdown sale. So we did a kind of subtle rollout of a sale and it kind of pulled our. Yeah, but we did have, this was around St. Patrick's Day, right? Super mm -hmm. fun holiday for marketing. We had this whole campaign lined up about get lucky That's with right. our St. Patrick's Day sale. Happy which little leprechauns. At the time was totally tone deaf. Right. So we scrapped all of that and through Zoom and Slack, like rolled out a totally different plan, which yeah. was first do no harm, mm -hmm. right? We just decided not to say anything as we were just trying to figure out what was going on. And what was going on in our customers' minds. So you, under all of these circumstances, first of all, everyone's working from home and not only is our team working from home, but we are now working from home and all of our children are working from home. Mm -hmm. We've got four kids that have been living at home um, and we have the worst Wi-Fi. So imagine six people <laughs> fighting for the Wi-Fi. Okay, so there were some stresses there just mm -hmm. here domestically. Yeah, sure. Um, but as our CEO, mm. what was the main thing that was weighing on you? Because mm. you were carrying a heavy burden and we could all sense it. You could? I was trying to look so cool and, and calm and collected. I, I really felt like my most important job during that period was to communicate with our team. So I, I did a lot more than I normally do, I think, in terms of like getting on Zoom and and kind of, you know, emceeing town hall and providing State of the Union and talking about our game plan. I think I did more than normal, like sort of checking in with, with individual team members on Slack and then kind of writing my take on that day's terrible news on our Slack general channel. I felt I felt like that was my one of my biggest responsibilities was just to be communicating more and not just normal. about like, this is where we are on this project in this campaign and who's moving and shipping this thing. But you were really good about saying, how are you mm. doing? Like, how are you doing? Mm. I, I do remember wanting to write a few different ways that we shouldn't expect everything to be normal, but on Zoom, but that we were going to be working differently. And I do remember also wanting to write a lot about just making sure everyone's taking the time to sort of stay healthy and stay safe. And give themselves a break. Like I did a lot of let's give ourselves a break and and um, don't feel like you need to be, you know, rope to your home desk setup for, for ten hours. hours in a row. Oh, yeah, ten hours. I'm oh, sorry. So I just wanted to make sure no one felt like 
It's up to me to yeah. save the company and I can't even blink for a second. Well, you did a really great job, especially in all of our town halls and our all team Zooms, um, putting forward that brave face. But I live with you, mm. right? <laughs> and so I know that behind Zoom, mm-hmm. you were um, maybe having a bit of a hard time. And I thought maybe this would be a good time to share that because we've learned very personally over the last three years through experiences with some family members and other people that we care deeply about and, uh, and serve that it's so important to talk about what's going on with our mental health and in our minds. Yeah. The timing, uh, we, we were able to, um, release, uh, release, put out a new benefit to our company in January with Mm Tava health providing, um, telehealth based mental health, uh, care and support. So both counseling as well as medication management, we were able to roll that out in January. Again, it was happy times then. Mm-hmm. We were you know, talking about how excited we were about Tava in our town halls and as we rolled out the benefit. And you know, people immediately, I think, saw the benefit and value of, of working with Tava. Well, that first month. We had 30% of our team sign up for um, either uh, therapy or medication management telehealth sessions with Tava within 30 days, mm-hmm. which was amazing. Yeah. Just to show how much how much need there is for those kinds of services. And when we rolled that out in the town hall, Nate did declare that he also was gonna sign up. And I did. <laughs> it took me a little while, but you signed I got up. over my little hurdles and I was able to um, have some amazing therapy sessions with an incredible person uh, with tons of experience in counseling that I didn't, I don't think I know how much I needed it, but, uh, it was really impressive and I mean, amazing. I, think to me. I knew how much you needed it, <laughs> but I think there is even as much as we want to destigmatize all things, mental health, like in the world, mm-hmm. there's still, we carry with us a little bit of that. And for me, I don't even know if it was stigma cause I'm, I'm over that. I mean, I want to talk about how we all need to be taking care of our mental health the same way we take care of our dental health. I mean, right. no, no one blinks about going to the dentist twice a year and everyone does it. And it's just like part of what it means to be a healthy human being in 2020. But for whatever reason, we don't do that for our mental health. And I think for me, it's like I was stuck on, it's going to be too hard. What if I don't like the person? I don't really like to talk to anybody about anything anyway. So this is going to be talking about my feelings, time, which is it takes not high time. on my list. And you're busy yeah. with all kinds of other commitments. Right. So what finally pushed you to make the appointment and what was it like? Yeah. I think I actually was really stressed out, like one you know millimeter below the surface, and I was starting to recognize that that was coming out, you know, in ways I wasn't happy with. Where I was act- interacting with you, interacting with my kids, some of our team members, um, and so I thought, okay, I-, I probably could, you know, use some help with this, and I was just blown away in my first um, counseling session how sort of how quickly I saw the value and, and uh, talking to my therapist. So, um, and I can't, I didn't feel like I could continue to sort of recommend that people that I love, um, work to find a therapist or a doctor that they could work with to find help if I wasn't doing it myself. So I was really, um, pleasantly surprised and thought I would hate every second of it and actually really enjoyed it. Did come away completely spent emotionally Um, in each of my therapy sessions, it kind of drains me and I have to take another extra sort of walk around the block to kind of be ready to go again, but it's been really helpful to me. Yep. And we continue in all of our town halls, uh, to remind our team that that is a benefit for them and their dependents. We've seen quite a few. We're up to 50% of our team now has, um, has uh, signed up for Tava and I think 30% have actually initiated care in some way. Yeah. And I've had therapy sessions and a couple of our kids have also. So that's been a huge, huge blessing, which thank heavens we had in place before this crisis. Um, okay. So talk to us a little bit, um, put your business hat on Mm -hmm. CEO of the company. Um, sales fell 50% those first two weeks. What are the ongoing lingering major stressors and how are you dealing with that? Yeah, I think it's just the utter unknown. I mean, the top story in the Wall Street Journal yesterday was the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell talking about how we are um, in an absolutely unprecedented time with the deepest recession um, we've seen since World War II. 
and that we are at the highest levels of unemployment that we've seen since the 30s. There's some scary things. Yeah, like I'm no. starting to feel my heart rate. It's just a little bit <laughs> And I, I think though. especially if, if, if someone we know and love is, struggles with severe anxiety, you know, the unknown is just mm -hmm. such an exact, it just exacerbates that, that those feelings and those, those worries and it can really drive anxiety and panic. Mm -hmm. So um, I do definitely worry about just all of the unknown. We, we don't know how this is going to play out. All we can really do is, you know, wake up again and see what does tomorrow bring? I feel like 2020, we've already lived like six years or so yeah. um, since Rudy Gobert Day. And I mean, I can't, I guess I'm excited about what's going to happen. Because he's an optimist. <laughs> so you have a real gift for looking at the good that's mm. coming out of hard things. And through experience, when we go through really hard things that even in the time feel like utmost failure, you end up a little better, mm. stronger at the end. Right. I mean, not every time. Sometimes you end up beating smarter. Up. You end up smarter. Um, I think you have a gift for having that mindset, mm. but not everyone does. So, what um, what final words of advice would you give to our communities for people who are feeling those same stresses, professionally, domestically? Um, yeah, I would just put one more plug in there for if all of a sudden, and you and I are, you know, you are of course timeless, but I'm getting a little bit older. <laughs> And uh, sometimes we see each other looking at our iPhones like, you know, like we need bifocals because we, we probably need do. <laughs> and, you know, one time we went on a date together to the ophthalmologist and got our little prescriptions, you know, prescriptions yeah. which we haven't fully filled out yet. But there's versions of healthcare that nobody has a single hang up, you know, going to get. And I just hope that over time, more and more and more of us can lead a conversation to share with the people we love and that we know and that we you know, come in contact with our own personal experiences with mental health care so that we can see that become as widespread and as prevalent as you know, getting your teeth checked twice a year. Yeah. I, I'm sure there was a time where like going to the dentist was you didn't do it because it was scary and it was expensive and it was hard to figure out where to go and you didn't really know when else that did it. But now it's 2020. If you didn't go to the dentist, like there's something wrong with you, you know, and, or, or you're just in terrible circumstances and we need to find ways to help and care for you. But nobody thinks that's a bad idea. Right. And I think we need to get to the same place with our mental health care. Well, Silicon Slopes Mental Health Committee and Room Here is working hard to put together resources that are easy, easily accessible. And um, but I think you hit on the thing that is most important that is sharing our stories. So. Thank you for letting us share our story. We would love to hear your story too.